Welcome! React 19's new compiler promises way faster web apps. You and I will look at everything today. How to set it up, real code examples, reveal hidden tips and tricks, and look at common mistakes. So at the end you not only know everything about the React compiler that you need to know, but you also might get a better React developer. So let's dive right in. So I'm in a Next.js app right now, but that doesn't matter. You can follow along with plain React with Gatsby? I don't know if you can follow along with Gatsby, but with Astro, with Remix, with Tenstack style, whatever is based on React. So React compiler is optimizing unoptimizing things. That's how you could summarize it. So we need an unoptimized component. Before we understand what the React compiler actually does, we need to understand what's the problem and what's wrong. So we have this expensive component. This is getting some products and it's just iterating over these products and is displaying a product, which is just a diff. Pretty simple component here. We also also doing some expansive processing here. This is just a dummy function for just some expansive things. Expansive in this case just means the client or the server or wherever this runs has a lot of things to do here. And then we have the page TSX of course where the expensive component is used and we have a button that increments a counter and a button that adds a product and yeah the products are just dummy products. <laughs> so at the end of the day it's pretty simple. It just looks like that. We have a yeah, count increment here, we can add a new product and we have a list of all our products, which is pretty, pretty, pretty long. So here's the thing now, in the console, I log if the expensive component renders and I log if the expensive processing is called. So if I trigger a re-render, so I update the count in my parent component, I see that the expensive component re-renders and did you see the delay? It's actually horrible, right? I click my UI freezes and then I get the count because this heavy component is loading and once everything is rendered, the UI updates and this just takes time. But this is not needed. And here as well, if I add a product, both re-render. Sure, the expensive component itself should re-render, but as you could remember, the expensive processing function is just getting market data. So it's not even getting the products. So why should this run again with the same market data? That makes no sense, right? So these are the key problems we have. Unnecessary renderings and unnecessary calling of functions that don't need to be called. So here's what we used to do without the React compiler. React gives us some optimization functions. Memo, use memo, use callback. We can use these to yeah, solve these problems. So we can wrap our whole function component into memo. That means that if in the parent component something changes like this counter here, that the expensive component is only changing if products or market data actually change. And while the counter is changing, the expensive component doesn't care, right? So that's the first fix. Now it's memoized. The second fix is for this expensive processing function. So it should only yeah, be called if market data is changing. And when market data is not changing, but for example, our products here are changing, I don't care because the output would be the same. So we wrap it in use memo and say depends on C market data. Cool. And then we have use callback. We can use that for functions that shouldn't be recreated on every render. But then we had to also create a click handler here and pass that to the on click. And you see, it's getting complex. I mean, this is just a simple component, but all these optimization functions are cool, nice, but they make the thing just complex. It's just looking ugly and junior developers don't understand anything here. But if we switch this component and then look into our browser, we will see, let me do a quick refresh, that if I update the count here, nothing re-renders. It's like the console is quiet. And if I add a product, sure, the expensive component renders, but not the expensive processing function. So that's pretty, pretty good. And we save a lot of resources because as you can feel, our UI is quick and fast. All right, so this is where the React compiler comes into play. You find a guide on how to activate that for your React framework down in the description. In Next.js, it's pretty simple. We have this experimental flag React compiler and we set it to true. Okay, nice. So we just, yeah, run our server and we see error, fail to load bubble plugin React compiler, because that's another dependency that we actually need. Bubble is a JavaScript compiler and it has nothing to do with React compiler, not yet. So we have to install this separately. So we just type in pnpmi and bubble plugin React compiler. You can use npm as well, of course. And there we go. And that's all you need to do. Now React compiler is activated. So if we switch back to our, yeah, not optimized component, so just our basic component that has no optimization and that honestly looks pretty clean. So now you will notice that when I update the count here, nothing happens. It's optimized automatically under the hood for us. Ah, that's the magic of the React compiler. Your code is just getting optimized. But what about the add product? Let's take a look at this. That doesn't seem to work, right? So 
React compiler seems not to be smart enough to understand that the expensive processing is not relying on the products. So yeah, you could summarize this as the problem of the React compiler. It's not smarter than you. It doesn't know everything that you want. So this expensive processing function has nothing to do with React. It's just a function in a file. And the React compiler is just optimizing yeah, React things. So components or hooks, for example. But this is just a random function. So this is probably not getting optimized. And on the other hand, the React compiler is not optimizing things if it's just not sure about it. So if it's about 50-50, it will always not optimize these things because potentially things could break with that optimization. So it says, mm, no, I'm not doing that do that manually. So in the case that you have this expensive processing here, you would actually need to wrap this with use memo yourself like that. Thank you, cursor. And you're good to go. So React compiler, cool, and it will handle 90% of all cases, but 10%, yeah, you might optimize yourself. But yeah, cool. Now we have React compiler running. How do we know? I mean, sure, I lock things here and stuff, but how do you generally know that React compiler is now running? So there's this pretty, pretty simple trick. You just go into your React components dev tools. If you don't have this tab, you need to install the React dev tools as a extension. And then you can go in here and you see basically every component. And what you will see here is, there it is, memo. And you will find that a lot, like here on my page, every button, every expensive component here, every product is actually being memoized. Yeah, this clearly shows me that the compiler is being used. And also in this scary, ugly directory.next, you can find the static output, look at the chunks, see at the app, and there we have our page. And if we take a look at this ugly, minified, scary code, we will see something like, yeah, React memo. And that is a clear sign that the compiler is working because I didn't add React memo. So there it is, and that's how you can check if it's working. But how is it really working under the hood? Yeah, I actually started out with a sketch here, but I need to be honest with you, it's just too complex. So everything that you need to know for now is we have an unoptimized component, then we bring it into the React compiler and we have an optimized component. So in detail, React compiler splits your components into multiple chunks and tracks somehow every state logic in your application. And based on that, it decides what to cache and what not to cache and what to optimize. It's complex. And if you want to know how this really works into detail, either look into the next directory because there you can find the cache accesses or otherwise I linked an article down in the description explaining this for you. But this would be too long for this video. So let's move on. So React compiler is working, everything is fine, but you have problems. What are you going to do? Things unexpectedly don't work at runtime. So you have a couple of options here. For example, you could incrementally adopt the React compiler actually. So you would say something here like compilation mode, and then you set this to, I think, annotation? Yes. So now if I set this to annotation, the React compiler, yeah, theoretically is activated, but it's somehow deactivated. So it does nothing. It's in our project, but it does nothing. And we actually have to opt into it with writing just use memo on top of our files. Now the React compiler is working and you can add these use memos right away. But I think a better approach is to just set this to true and to actually just add use no memo if you face any problems. Because then the React compiler opts out for this component and your things are good to go and you can find the error. But how do you find the error? What is React compiler causing to not work? It's pretty simple, the rules of React. That's what you have to follow. You find a link to the rules of React in the description, but it's just how you should use React. And if you don't use React or your packages don't use React as they want you to use React, things break. And one cool thing you can actually do here is a health check. So NPX React compiler health check. You just run this in your project and you can just see, for example, in my case, successfully compiled, but strict mode usage not found, which is recommended. So it just gives you some tips and finds things that are not following the rules of React. And even better, you can also install the ESLint plugin for React Hooks. So this also has knowledge about the React compiler and it will just give you ugly linting errors when something is not done right. So when something is not following the rules of React. So clearly my advice here, if things break, find out what's not working in terms of React clean code and not in terms of React compiler. Sure, React compiler is still somehow a little bit experimental. So things can break and there can be bugs in this thing. But yeah, overall, it's most of the time just violations to the rules of React. Thanks for watching this in-depth guide. We just learned everything about the React compiler that you probably need to know. If you have any further questions, down in the description, you find 
no, below the description, you find a comment box. I will promise you I answer everything in a couple of hours. Thank you for watching and have a great week. Bye bye.